Hey everybody, this is Doc Love, your Shade Tree Chef. Today we're going to be doing pork ribs on the barrel cooker, uh, baby back ribs, and it's a new te technique that I've just seen. It's going to blow your mind, so I can't wait to show you. We're going to use a yellow sweet onion and one garlic clove, and PAM! My very own homemade pork rub. So I cut the sweet onion in half, as you see. Getting it ready to do some diced onions on one side. Get some nice cubes going. Nice and slow, easy, no losing fingers. <laughs> and on the other half, I just cut down for some half rings. That'll help fill space. And I'll explain why in a little bit later as we move through here look at there cutting onions no tears boys all right for the um, garlic clove boom boom that's how you smash her open it's always neat to be able to use fresh ingredients anytime you can and I did slice them up a little bit not a whole lot just want to make sure I had enough to cover the gap there that will have a cavity in between two baby back ribs and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about coming up here shortly as I'm slicing up some more garlic see a lot of folks talk about you know how many briquettes to use or how many pieces of coal to use um, there's no exact science in my opinion. So I know I was gonna be doing grilling for four or five hours. So I didn't fill it all the way up, but I did make sure there were no gaps. There we go, getting her down in the barrel. This is my third or second, second cook on the barrel. To light it, see a lot of folks worry about what to do to light it. It's really simple guys, gals. Your paper towel, get you some canola oil there, a little bit, soak it up, but you got to have some of it dry, you don't want it totally saturated, and that just helps it burn longer than a dry, totally dry paper towel would. Don't worry about the uh, the spent uh, burnt pieces uh, afterwards because it'll come right off the, the crate there. No worries, no big deal. So I didn't totally load up the uh, the chimney as you see, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> but as you saw, it was smoking right away. All right, here we go. Two regular plain Jane, right out of Walmart, baby back pork ribs. Nothing special, nothing expensive. I did look for some meaty ones. And we'll take a check on the chimney, see how it's going. Looking real good. I try to make as least a mess as I can. So I just cut the top and pull it out of the top. Good looking real. Look at there, no time. Flame it up real good. All right, for this, and a lot of people like to pull the uh, silver skin off the back, leave it on. So you are going to need a little bit of a barrier on what we're doing here and score it in a diamond pattern. And here's how I did it. You really need a really, really sharp knife. And the pattern will look like the uh, outside of a ham, if you will, where you make that diamond cut for the fat. And it's the same kind of cut, diamond cut, on the silver skin on the back side of the ribs there. I know you're thinking, what in the world is this cat doing? Trust me. Just trust me. It's going to be awesome. 
same thing on the other rib area there. We'll show you a good close up right here shortly. done you'll never know it's there trust me if you ever done rib there you go there's a good shot you see the diamond pattern if you ever done ribs and forgot to take the silver skin off you can kind of tell it's there you won't even notice it's there oh gotta be neat got to clean up a little bit <laughs> gotta have a clean work area when you're working your magic. Beautiful day for grilling in a Carolina afternoon. Clocked out at 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. Sun just about to go over the horizon. Beautiful day in you know, January in the Carolinas. See the smoke from the uh, chimney. It's doing real fine. Got the pit going back there from a lady, a.k.a. Miss Redhead. She's the camera person today. And she's doing a fantastic job. So here we go. Here's what I'm going to do with two baby back ribs at the first time. Now, bear with me. I'm no professional chef. I'm creating this as I go. The results are phenomenal, though. Take the onions and fill the gap like you're building a sub. You know, get a lot of the diced onions and you know the, the half rings and that way you fill in the gap so when you put them together yes that's right we're going to put them together if you can't seal off the end everything won't fall out and what this does it creates a lot of moisture in the cook and it translates to moist flavorful tender ribs it's a little bit of work but for me there you go the, the garlic going on but to me that's part of the fun that's part of the therapy this is my therapy <laughs> going on the back patio and creating ways to different ways to do things trying new things so got that cavity pretty well filled other one yeah I've got it backwards turn it around there boy <laughs> and what you want to do is you don't want it to go bone to bone you want it to, you know alternate the, the bones you know beside each other so it'll so the meat's kind of touching so it'll close the gap there see how that closed up there and when I trimmed the uh, ribs I kind of maybe trimmed a little bit off on the end. I want them to be square, so there is a hole there, but with the uh, with two different sizes of onions there, even though they'll be sauteed uh, very well, uh, the larger onions, you know, will kind of keep everything in there. Just make sure it's not bone to bone. Trust me, boys, it's gonna be good. Everybody was kung fu fighting, yeah! I'm just climbing around. Gotta have fun. Cause I love grill. I love this barrel cooker. As you see, I let it go till it's almost red to the very top. And that's what you want to do. You don't want to put it down kind of like charcoal where you kind of wait till it gets halfway. It depends on how much you got in there. But from what I've you know, been watching on the barrel cooker, social media and folks that got a lot of experience with them they said let it burn you know get get cherry red all the way to the top with the oak lump coal got B, &B oak lump coal and B, B pecan wood chips in there oh hey there's the neighborhood cat nose it around <laughs> 
So what I did afterwards, once I poured in the hot coals, is use the long tongs to make sure everything was centered. So it'll go on top and then burn out. All, right, all you need is baking or cooking twine. Don't get regular string. You need actual cooking twine. Find it in any cooking department, no matter what store. And just what I did, I start on the ends and work my way to the inside. I don't have a particular special knot. Maybe there is in the culinary school, but I'm no unschooled. <laughs> Learn it on my own under the shade tree. And we'll speed up the process there. Go around to the other end. And then I'll start in the middle. Alright, now all the strings are on. Got the uh, my personal, my own homemade pork rub that I use quite often and as you see the, the hooks are already installed so I did the the strings for the ribs themselves and then I added extra string I did a double wrap for the hooks and yes I got them on top and bottom and you'll see why there's the ones on the bottom Flip her over, get the other side, get every exposed meat. And as it's been said time and time and time, don't slide your hand over it, always pat. Pat her in there. Pay attention to detail. Get the corners, the ends, the sides. Having fun with it. Get the fire going good, looking beautiful. Now we're ready to install. So I got hooks hanging from the bottom. And I hang it like that. Now I have no idea if this is going to work. I thought when I first put it on there, oh my gosh, it's going to be too soft. See it kind of bowed in the middle. But I thought, well, I'm going to try it. I've committed this far to it, so let's see what happens. go for it so here it is about 30 minutes in I wanted to see if the the hooks the weight of the ribs were gonna cut through the the, the meat as it tenderizes while it's uh, over the fire but so far so good so and I look checked it again about 45 minutes it's ready to flip over one two third times a charm <laughs> and I just use the other hooks and I didn't grab the bottom hooks because they're closer to the fire and they will be very hot if you try this on the cooker so I did wrap these do wrap them and I have light brown sugar and then going with Cosmo Q Apple Habanero Rib Glaze. Oh, I love Cosmo Q products. Their rib glazes are amazing. I've applied them several different ways. Here's a different way than the other video I did. And squash it on like that. On top of the light brown sugar. And then, of course, more rub. <laughs> homemade uh, that's just a homemade label I just have fun with it I like mixing that stuff myself and experimenting with different flavors all right that's right at two hours total cook time almost an hour per side When I went to take it off, I thought, well, maybe I better take the hooks off so I put it straight down on 
the um, the mix, you know, the stuff that I put on the heat tinfoil, then I thought, well, I'll just grab it and take them off when I set it down. So remember, I'm inventing this as we go uh, from a uh, video I saw on the Barbecue Pit Boys. That's where I saw this. But not on, they didn't do it on a pit barrel. So this is the first time I've seen it tried on a pit barrel. So the hooks came out easier once I got it down. Put one side directly over where you put the ingredients on the uh, tin foil there. Taking off the hooks on the other side. And I got double foil down. Definitely want to do double foil. Take a look at this color. Look at that, boys. That is beautiful. Smells unbelievable. We're about halfway through the cook. And we're going to do the same thing on the top side. Light brown sugar first. And more of the apple habanero rib glaze. Slow motion action, boys. Look at that. Man, raise your hand if you're hungry now. Oh, yeah. Making me hungry. Beautiful. Beautiful sight. Finish putting her on there. Once that's done, I did put uh, more pork rub on the top. All right, closing up the first layer of the uh, tin foil. Try to make it tight because you know it's a whole lot more round than doing just a one rib by itself. So you want to make it airtight. And tight to the meat. So what I did was flip the whole thing over to try to eliminate the, um, the ingredients from getting out and the steam from getting out and escaping and the fluids because they're going to be good fluids that are in the center. And of course, you know, the ingredients are going to be on the outer part of the ribs. You know, that's for flavor. And if you like sauteed onions, this is a, a good way to have sauteed onions as a side with your ribs. Make it good and tight, nice and neat, paying attention to detail. And I'm going to put her back on the rack this time. And still maintaining uh, a little bit of temperature. I did open the box, the bottom, let more air get to it, so it raised the temperature just a little bit. And then once I put the um, lid back on it, I put the the um, slide on the bottom, back where it belongs, quarter way open. I'm in the Carolinas. I don't think we're quite at a thousand. There you go. There's the finished product. See the onions, sautéed onions. They were scrumptious, according to Redhead. And we'll let her uh, explain, mm. let her share how they <laughs> work. Very tender. What about the flavor? Flavor is magnificent. Good. Mm. <laughs> what kind of grade do these get? A plus. <laughs> mm. Thank you, my lovely camera lady, the lovely and talented Miss Redhead. And there you go. There's a good shot of the final product. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate everybody clicking.